Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers and new viewers who are here. If you are not subscribed, please consider. I see about 80% of you guys are not subscribed, so hit that button. And today's video is going to be a little bit different. I posted on a couple of different Fender Tonemaster Pro uh, forums asking what's the content that would help you out the most. And overwhelmingly, the response I got was to talk about the expression pedal and to talk a little bit about drives. So what I thought we would do on this episode is, one, I'm going to give you kind of an overview of the equipment you need and things to consider with your expression pedal. Then we'll talk about things or how you can use that expression pedal, because there's so many different ways. It's not just strictly wah or volume. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about some of the drives that I've been using the most on the Tollmaster Pro. And then I'll just open it up for questions. So I want to continue this series where I'm giving value to you. So if you have a question that I haven't already addressed in a previous video, leave a comment below or get in touch with me on, uh, you'll see my posts on a bunch of the Facebook groups. But as always, thank you guys. Let's get into it. All right, so talk about the gear that you need to use the expression pedal. You have two different options of expression pedals. You can have the official pedal, which has a toe switch, or you can have any expression pedal that doesn't have a toe switch. And you don't need the official pedal to be able to use a toe switch capability. You just need to use two cables. So if you're going to use something with a toe switch, and if you're unfamiliar, it's you press the top, kind of like a Crybaby Wah pedal, and it has a switch in there. So the value of having a pedal that has the, uh, the click versus one that doesn't is that we can use this as its own button that you have on the Tollmaster Pro. So you can program this. When I click this, it's going to do this parameter. If you don't have one of those, that's fine. You'll just have to program a button that whenever I click this button, it's going to activate. Now, I'm going to show you how to do all that. All right, so let's talk about cables you need. If you're going to go the toe switch route, you need two cables. You need what we call a TRS cable, which is not a standard guitar cable. And you need a standard music cable, just quarter inch cable. This is what we use for the toe switch. And this is how basically whenever you hit the toe switch, it's sending a binary signal. It's either on or off and it just uses a normal music cable. If you're gonna use any expression pedal, you need a TRS cable. You can get these on Amazon. I got these for like 10 bucks. Um, and then I'll also have the Axe FX3 one. If you've watched my last video, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of the design of the Mission pedal. So instead of getting one that's large like this, if you're getting the Fender pedal, I would strongly recommend trying to find some flat cables. I don't know if they exist, but I assume they do. In the future, that'll be something I will upgrade to because it's a pain, if you're used to using the wall on the right side. Now, to set this up, uh, it's really simple. They have, on the back of the official pedal, toe switch, expression. And you'll see it says three conductors, TRS, or two conductors, TS. All that is is the cable style. So on your TRS cable, which is a three conductor cable, it goes in the top here. And this cable will plug into the expression pedal in the back. I'm going to find an old photo I took of my expression or of my unit and hopefully I can pull it up on screen now but and I'll show you how you can actually program it. All right, I have everything rigged up. This is uh, my Heritage Les Paul. What I'm going to do now is show you how to use and program the expression pedal and I'm going to show you some of the things you can do with it because it's a lot more than just wall or volume. But we're going to start with wall and volume because that's probably how most people will use this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a stack. We're going to go into effects, and we're going to go to filter and pitch, custom wah. And I'm going to show you my favorite wah settings here. But before we do that, we're going to go, if you look here at the bottom, expression assign. If you have the toe switch, so if you have the official pedal, we can say, hey, whenever I click the button, it's going to be on and off for the wah. All right, so now the wah pedal is set up to turn on and off the wall, but now we have to actually set it up to control the position. Um, sweet. All right, so now our wall is set up. I know you can't see my feet, but my foot's just going up and down. Um, on here, here are some of the things that I like to change. So first things first, I will change my range. I don't like to have a full frequency wall. I use a wah as, um, you know, I guess it depends. Sometimes I will do the. But most of the time, 
I like to use it as kind of like a low pass filter. So I'll just do low to mid. And I find that helps out a lot to get still really good control. See, it, I find I like how that responds a little bit better. Um, also for the inductor, you, now you can read into all these. I have just found I like the halo. I can't tell you what they do. All I can tell you is what they sound like and if my ear likes it or not. And out of all of them, I really enjoy the halo. And I think the reason why is because that replicates the old analog wah pedal that I used to have. Leave it at that. If you want to read into it, I'm sure someone in the comment section could tell me exactly what it is. I don't know. That's just the one that I like that sounds the best. But experiment. <laughs> And notice, now it's off. But I want to show you some of the different ways that you can use an expression pedal. So that's that's the wall. The volume is very similar. It's literally the same setup. Uh, and you can have both. So let's, let's figure out how to program that together. So what we're going to do is go back into effects. We're going to go to filter and pitch. And uh, it's probably going to be under volume. Yeah, volume pedal. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I am going to assign this switch to control my volume. Uh, yep, when it's active, we'll make it yellow. Why not? So I'm going to hit this. You can see it's working. Now what we need to do is we need to do expression assign. So let's see if we can use the same pedal. Yep, for volume. And all I gotta do to turn it off is click a button. So it's pretty cool that you can do that. But wait, there's more. So you can use this to control any parameter on any pedal or any amp. So let's see, let's go, let's add in another block. Uh, someone was asking me about pedal order. I can make a whole video on that, and if y'all are interested, I will. But typically, I'll do tuner, like if I'm building out an analog pedal board, and all of this, there's no rules with it. It's just all personal preference. So the way that I build my pedal board out, some people will be like, oh, why do you put compressor at the end? Uh, it's because when you go to record, everything's going through a final compressor. So I use that same... You know, same idea, like my compressor's at the end of my chain. Now, I have seen someone put their compressor at the end of the signal coming out, and I might end up trying to do that in a future video. But typically, what I like to do is tuner, volume, wah. Uh, then I do overdrives, distortion, any type of modulation. So that's like your chorus, your flanger, phaser. Then I'll do delay. And then at the end is obviously reverb. Now, if I'm going to do delay and reverb, and if I find that the delay is acting weird with the reverb, I will do parallel programming. I already have a video on that, but you can basically split the signal where your delay does not hit your reverb, and your reverb does not hit your delay, but they're both getting the same guitar signal. But what we're going to do for this video um, is we're going to add in, let's do modulation. And let's do, what was the one I liked last time? The electric flanger. So first things first, we're going to program a button to turn this on and off so we can use it just like an actual pedal. And that's kind of how I use the Tone Master Pro in general, is I use it just like an analog pedal board. Now, you can use it, um, you know, when, when we're talking about workflow, your workflow can be anything from trying to use it like a, a scene or a setting, how some people in the Helix world like to use their devices. You can use it as just using a bunch of different presets, and that's how you go about doing it. You can use it with song set list, which I think that's a little too tedious, and the labor is very labor intensive to build out, but maybe that's how you prefer your workflow. The thing is, is that this is a very flexible unit, and you can use it however you want. Now, the way that I use this is I am a tube analog guy coming into modeling. So I like to use this as a virtual pedal board 
and I usually don't change amps. I like to stick. My philosophy is getting a really good clean tone and then using pedals to change up, you know, to mess with that tone. But if you get a good clean tone, it's a beautiful pedal platform. Because uh, I just, I have yet to find a high gain amp that I just like really love. And honestly, now my playing is kind of gravitating more into the R&B soul type stuff anyway. So I guess that's just a representation of where I'm at. All right. So all I did was I program my, uh, you can see I'm clicking the button here to turn on and off my flanger. Now let's say we want to get weird and uh, we're going to use expression pedal one. We're going to come in, confirm. Now the thing I'm going to use my pedal to change is we can do rate, depth, uh, I don't know what the color is on this, but we'll find out. So let's see. It's on. <laughs> yeah, maybe you want to get weird on it. It's up to you. But let's let's see what the other. So that's rate. Let's see what depth is. That's a little song I'm working on. <laughs> yeah, and all I was doing, I was just working my heel back and forth, and it was changing the, the depth. What, what I want you to take away from this is don't worry what each individual parameter is. Like, for example, you saw me mess around with the depth and the time, or the rate. Yeah, I know what rate is, but I wasn't 100% depth. So all I did was I tried it, and I used my ears, and I let my ears be the guiding voice of, do I like to use this workflow or not? And a lot of the times, if the answer is no, spend a little bit more time in, with it. Because a lot of the times, we're so used to a certain workflow that if something doesn't fit inside that mold, it's hard for us to try something new. But one thing I've been doing is really trying to commit and really learning something before I, I jump out. Um, and with that, that's, that's really why I know someone was asking me to look into custom IRs. I will, but I, I really want to understand the Fender ecosystem. Like they made decisions for a reason and uh, regardless of how you feel about Fender, it's a company that I trust. So if the engineers decided to do it a certain way, I want to understand why they made those decisions because if you can really start understanding your gear, you can get the most out of it. Then you're not worried about buying all the custom IRs. And maybe my perception will change over time. I just feel like I still don't have enough time with the unit to say like, I need custom IRs, except for maybe on seven and eight string. But hopefully an update will come and fix that. Um, all right. Another thing that someone asked me to talk about in the Facebook forums was drives and why I choose to use certain drives. Um, so let's talk about it. It depends on the preset that I'm in. Different drives have different functions. Okay. So this is my, you can see my Juicy Cleans preset. And this is already uploaded to the cloud. So feel free to download this. I don't remember if it has my clone on it, but the, the main structure of this preset you can download. And this is the best clean sound I have made on this unit. Um, so with that, where I'm using this preset specifically is anytime I'm doing any type of R&B and soul. So if I'm playing like a D'Angelo song or if I'm writing in the style of D'Angelo uh, or, you know, some Daryl Hall and, or Daryl Notes, uh, like I've been playing a lot of, uh, Sarah smile lately. This is the preset I'm gravitating towards, or any type of Chan. Um, basically, Neo Soul, this is what this preset is designed for. So with that, I don't need a high gain uh, overdrive pedal. Now, if you just need something that gives you kind of like edge of breakup tone and also giving you a boost where you can be heard, this is my favorite pedal on here. This is the Klon replica, so if I go to replace, you can see it's called Mythic Drive, but it's basically a Klon. This pedal, the real physical copy of it, sells for like, I think the last one I saw sold for seven grand. And it, it does a great represent, you know, a great replica of it. But I'll let you hear it. So here is what my tone, if I'm gonna go.
Yeah, so I use it anytime I want, like that really edge of breakup sound and just to add a little bit of oomph to my, my playing. Now with this, I could probably pull the game back just a little bit. Here it is with it off. Yeah, so again, gains or overdrive pedals, you really have two different ways of using it. I guess I'm kind of using this more of like a boost into edge of breakup, even though I'm using a JC120 amp. I just think this is the best clean sounding amp, which is insane because I usually love Fender amps. They just did such a good job replicating this amp, and I've never never played with it. Um, and it's just really flat, clean, with a little bit of juice on it, a little bit of stank. So, and then all I have on here is the Cloud Reverb, which really brought this amp alive for me. Um, yeah, other pedals that are really good, I mean, it, it just depends on the preset, right? So, you know, in my rock rig, I use the Nashville Overdrive. And, you know, the, the biggest thing that I do is it's not that one's better than the other. It's just like trying to learn how to use it. I like that this has the bass cut because sometimes modelers can come across as super low end heavy. Um, but at the end of the day, this is just me trying to learn this pedal because it's a new pedal in here. So I guess for my closing remarks, for the person who asked me to talk about pedals and um, why I use certain ones, for the individual who asked me to talk about overdrive pedals, the biggest thing that I want you to keep in mind is don't come into this thinking that one's better than the other. What I want you to do instead is imagine that you own all of these physical pedals and you get to build out your own pedal board. So imagine you have the biggest pedal train board you, you, they make, right? And you have access to every pedal that Guitar Center has. So now the question is not what's the best one. The real question is what do I enjoy? and why. And the only way that you can decide what you like and why is with time with the pedals. I can tell you the pedals that I enjoy, but the only reason why I know that is because it's like, man, when I first got out of the box, maybe I wasn't satisfied with the sound, but I spent enough time dialing it in and really reading about the documentation of seeing how this pedal reacts. And most importantly, using my ears. Once I use my ears to dial it in, now I can tell you, oh yeah, I like this Klon pedal because for me it does this thing where you know, it's like edge of breakup, but it's not full on overdrive, but it's also not full on just clean boost. It's that middle ground between the two, or that's at least how I use it. And I enjoy that it's a three knob pedal. So I don't have crazy control, like with the Maximus overdrive or distortion pedal. You have pedal, you have control over everything with that pedal. But I think that's gonna be it for the video. Um, I hope this was helpful and beneficial for those that continue to have questions please leave them on either a Facebook post or in the comment section of YouTube is honestly the best place. But wherever you leave it, um, I'll get back to you. And you know, you guys are giving me ideas for content creation, which I don't, that, that's, I don't mind that. That's a good thing. If you have watched up to this point, if you're interested in studying some of the guitar techniques you've heard and also a little bit more about sound design, please consider checking out my Patreon. There's a link in the bio. It's patreon.com slash Damien Andy. It's $5 a month. And I put out a lot of content on there. I think I was, I think I saw yesterday, I was up to like 60 posts. So there's a lot of guitar content for you to dive into, plus an ebook that I wrote that's called Music Theory for the Songwriters, where it's basically my college education in music composed down to a 30 to 40 page ebook, where I try to write it in layman's terms where you don't need to have a fancy music degree and feel like Mr. Proper to understand it. So check it out, it's $5. Also, you guys know I'm big on attitude of gratitude, so if you don't mind, let me know one thing you're grateful for, and hopefully you all had a wonderful holiday period. Merry Christmas, if that's your thing, um, and I'm just grateful you guys are here. Thank you so much for helping me grow. We just broke 650 subs. Crazy. Thank you guys so much. Uh, leave me questions in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next video.